Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Czech blog. I'm here again with Joe Rushton. We're doing our Healthy by Design series, and we're going to tackle a, a really important topic today. Uh, we're going to talk about reducing pain and inflammation in the body. And, you know, I think it's probably pretty obvious we want to reduce both. And, and clearly, everybody knows when, when you're feeling pain, that's a, that's a sign that something is going wrong. But inflammation is, is a really big deal too. And, and I think in some ways it doesn't get quite uh, as emphasized as much as it should. And I don't think that people recognize often too how pervasive it can be. But um, inflammation is important because it turns out that it's a precursor to pretty much all disease. Um, so when there's inflammation occurring, you know that something is, is really going wrong. And you know that you're suffer, suffering from inflammation in your daily life if you experience bloating, itching, rashes, swelling, uh, swelling or joint and muscular pain. And those are just some of the signs and symptoms that you're experiencing um, inflammation. So uh, as I said, it's really important to know when you're experiencing inflammation and kind of know the signs and uh, of what is happening in different parts of your body. And so Joe's going to kind of clear up a lot of issues about that for us today. We're going to get clear on exactly what we can start doing today to put out the fire, right? Inflammation is, is a kind of fire. So we're going to hear from Joe about what we can do to stop, uh, to start putting out the fire, inducing pain and symptoms. And uh, I understand again, we Joe is, Joe does this and it's always wonderful. It's a, a little something special for all of you who are visiting the blog today. Um, maybe another special little ebook. So we'll talk about that at the end. So stick with us. But um, all right, let's get to the good stuff, Joe. Um, I'm so excited to have you here for this topic. I think um, this is something that people need to know about. Uh, look, for sure. It's, uh, you know, every one of my clients um, is dealing with inflammation of, of one sort or another. Um, I've certainly dealt with it. And, you know, if I'm not... Um, if I'm not staying on top of the, uh, you know, the living philosophy that, that, you know, our, our man has taught us, then, um, <laughs> you know, I'll find myself back in, in, in the same, same situation for myself. So, yeah. you know, it's about, uh, paying attention and, um, really understanding, you know, um, what, what the body is signaling to yeah. you at yeah. any, any given point. Yeah. So for sure. Yeah. Great. So maybe the place to start then is is for you to tell us exactly just what is inflammation in the body and how does it start? Mm, sure. Well, you know, there's, there's so much we can talk about in, in this subject. And I know you and I are uh, <laughs> we're mm. having a competition to see if we can keep our uh, <laughs> our vlogs down to like 15, 20 minutes. So, yeah, I'm not uh, betting on our favor, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But let's, you know, let's see if we can kind of pull out some of the key key points here. Yeah. Um, you know, inflammation, if we, you know, um, you remember when we were talking back in our um, last last vlog around um, teeth and, and dental hygiene, we yeah. spoke quite a lot about pH mm -hmm. and the acid alkaline levels in our body. So essentially inflammation um, happens when that acid and alkaline um, shifts to being where we become too too consistently alkaline. Mm -hmm. So our saliva now is too consistently alkaline. Our urine is uh, sorry. Our saliva is too consistently acidic. My apologies. Mm -hmm. Below seven, seven point zero. If mm -hmm. you were to do a a, a, a test on a um, uh, right. an alkaline test. strip, yeah, yeah, a pH strip. Thank you. And so. What we have, the second thing that are, um, starts to occur in the body once we um, move to being within an environment internally um, that is too acidic and our body isn't able to buffer that acidity and so our natural metabolic processes within our detoxification pathways that would start to um, neutralize the acidity and pass that acidity out through our urine, that mechanism becomes um, compromised. And so the acidity then is held within the body and within our cells. Mm. And 
acid, as you mentioned right at the very beginning, is, is, it has a fire effect. Mm. So I always kind of describe to my clients that um, inflammation is essentially toxicity or free radicals in the body that are attacking the cell membrane walls. Mm. And if you were to hold a blowtorch over your skin, Mm. then that's what inflammation is, you know, that's what inflammation feels like and, and that's an analogy of what's going on internally mm. um, at a cellular level and the cell membrane walls are, you know, being attacked, if you like, by this fire. Mm. And like, as we know, fire is catabolic, it breaks things down. So if you can start to imagine at a cellular level, inflammation essentially is starting to break us down at a cellular level and mm. therefore starts to compromise all cellular function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? And the byproducts of that is um, pain, um, swelling, heat, mm. um, inflammation, um, often, um, you know, internally within the gut, people experience as a result bloating, mm. reflux, abdominal pain, mm. um, you know, another, other signs of the same inf inflammation response is, is um, diarrhea, mm. um, even a fluctuation between constipation and diarrhea. Yeah. And so these are just all the natural signs of the body doing its job to communicate to us that something is out of balance, mm -hmm. um, that, as you said, inflammation has now been scientifically proven to be the precursor to all disease. Yeah. And so it's, it's our body's you know, first communication mechanism, if you like, that something is out of balance. Yeah. Okay, and and as you said, you know, if there's a fire, if we see a fire outside, what do we go and do? Yeah. Oh, put it out. Water. Put yeah. it out. Yeah. Put it out. Yeah. Depending on what the fire is and how yeah. it started, yeah, would depend on what we choose a, sure. to throw a blanket over it or to yeah. throw water over it or foam. Yeah. You know, in accordance to what the type of fire is. Well, yeah. for us, you know, we don't have that complication. The first thing we go to is <laughs> water. Yeah. Yeah. And we, you know, want to start putting that fire out with water. Yeah. Um, and that's the first go-to that we can give, you know, all of our audience right now, if you suffer from any form of inflammation, the very first thing um, that, that you need to do is, is you know, more good quality water. I had a client just email me the other day, you know, Joe, you know, what am I going to do about this, you know, inflammation and um, um, fluid retention? She was asking, is there a natural diuretic I can use to get rid of the fluid retention? And, and I'm like, no, we need to understand why there is fluid retention in the, in the first place and that's a mechanism or a, a side effect of the inflammation. Yeah. And we need Mother Nature's most natural material, which is good quality, well mineralized, alkalized water, in order to reduce that inflammation so that the body can stop holding on unnecessarily to that fluid, which is doing so in order to cool it down and to try and reduce the uh, inflammatory response. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So that's, that's really what inflammation is in the body. And so, so, you know, it, we talk about it being sort of very common and uh, is manifesting in different ways, but what are the key things that, ca that cause inflammation? Are there some sort of general things we could talk about as a cause? Yeah, look, absolutely. <laughs> and and um, the, the general causes are really, really common. Um, we just, again, need to come back and look at lifestyle choices around diet straight away. Um, mm -hmm. All of the processed foods, all foods that are acidic are going to, again, shift, shift that you know, internal pH balance into an environment over a prolonged period of time that isn't favorable to the metabolic processes of the body. And so making sure that our diet is well alkalized in plenty of green leafy vegetables, plenty of um, you know, well mineralized vegetables, um, making sure we've got the right uh, amount of antioxidants and, and photonutrients on board through our various fruits, salads and vegetables to counterbalance the amount of acidity coming in through common choices like coffee yeah. and um, 
sodas and um, packaged foods and too many foods that have got added sugar to them. Yeah. And you know these are you know these are the kind of food choices and 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 liquids that that I kind of describe as as you know they they're the they're the fuel that we pay for when we don't understand how to look after our body. You know, yeah. caffeine is is a stimulant, and and, and remember, in majority of cases, the the sort of food choices that will cause the inflammation are stimulants. Mm. They're stimulating to the body, and therefore mm. they're catabolic to the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so food. Because that's what you know. We we all we all have to eat. We all have to at some point make a choice during the day of you know what to feed ourselves. And invariably, people um, don't pay enough attention to that. They don't. They're either misinformed as to what healthy choices are, um, or they just don't pay enough time and attention, and they don't put it on their priority list as to really understanding that you are what you eat. And if you want to fuel yourself with you know food that both energizes you and nourishes you at the same time then you know there is some thought and organization that needs to go into that so food is is one of the greatest things that can both um heal you or become the cause of disease yeah. Yeah. um what about actually just sort of other lifestyle stress right if if i'm unhappy with my job if i'm sort of chronically and persistently unhappy, right? These kinds of stresses that build up in your life. Is that also a possible source of these inflammations? Absolutely it is, James. You know, mm. what you're talking about there is kind of, you know, the unseen side of us, the, yeah. um, the untouchable, unseen side of us, um, mm. our psyche, that mm. shifts our biochemistry and shifts our... Um, uh, hormonal balance to a, a point where it can also become very acidic. So mm -hmm. cortisol levels, we know are the body's natural stress hormonal response. Yeah. Um, you know, when we're able to control that response, it can actually be a healthy hormone and it, 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 it's needed. Um, but when we're not controlling that response and we have chronic elevated levels of cortisol, then that immediately is going to um, be an be a contributing factor to increased inf inflammatory responses. So as Paul always says, you know, a sick mind creates a sick body. Um, and if we've got a lot of stinking thinking going on, uh, which is like just a buildup of garbage and we don't take the garbage out, then, you know, it's the same as if you don't, you know, empty your garbage in your kitchen. You know, yeah. sooner or later, the kitchen is going to start to, to stink, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. And things are sitting there decaying. Well, our thoughts, if we're not doing, you know, processes that can help us to really um, maintain a healthy thinking um, process, if you like, and a healthy state of being mm -hmm. through our thoughts and through the attitudes um, that we tend to place our energy into then if they're not supportive they will they will absolutely affect you at a cellular level um there's so much research out there greg braden um, bruce lipton joe dispenza all talk about the effects of um our thoughts on our physical body yeah. um so definitely we need to get on top of thoughts hydration if we're dehydrated mm -hmm. <laughs> Then you know we are uh, you know we're we're going to be inflamed. Mm -hmm. um, the the body dehydration is is again a precursor towards inflammation. Yeah. So making sure that we've got good adequate amounts of, of water on board. Exercise. Yeah, I was just going to ask. I mean, it seems like exercise could be something that goes either way, right? Depending upon what kinds of exercises you're choosing, it can be anti-inflammatory or it could be you know stimulating inflammation. That's right. That's right. And that's why, you know, Paul in his book, How to Eat, Move and Be Healthy, um, spends a whole chapter talking about working in versus working out and giving you the zone exercises, which are anti-inflammatory exercises. Yeah. You know, if we really want to look at, at how to create a, a, uh, a low or an anti-inflammatory diet or an anti-inflammatory lifestyle, mm -hmm. then when it comes to exercise, that's the first place that we'd go is, is to look at the zone exercises and what part of our body are we suffering pain or inflammation in? And then you choose the relative zone and you start choosing an exercise within that zone 
that's going to target that particular area of the body and naturally through the body's own intelligent your body's own natural intelligence it's going to start to support the mechanisms that start to to draw fluid into the various areas if that's what's required along with energy and nutrition to to draw the various toxins um, out of that particular area um, and waste products out of that area that are actually causing the inflammation so you know exercise is, is a big one and you know, I'm always working with my clients to teach them, you know, less is more. And more often than not, the general general population still use exercise as a stress relief. And those that approach exercise as a stress relief are often doing it in a way that expends energy, in a way that actually feeds the fire. Mm-hmm. And they feel good short term. They have that little adrenaline hit that you know picks them up and is a stimulant and makes them feel good momentarily um, but soon after at the end of the day they come home and you know the joints are aching and they have pain and and the key indicator is you know if they're not recovering from that if the pain and inflammation isn't going you know isn't reducing or if you know uh, a workout that is the natural um, breaking down of a muscle and creates soreness as a result. But if that soreness is is still lingering after, you know, 24, 48 hours and you're not recovering properly, it's an indication that you're working out too hard relative to your body's capacity to recover from what you're doing, what you're choosing to do and how you're choosing to do it. Yeah, yeah. And runners just... Uh, as a runner myself, yeah, yes, as a runner myself, I can tell you that uh, running is something that uh, I, I used to and, and still occasionally do use as, as a stress reliever. You, you can get into that pace where your body feels like it's automatic, your mind kind of goes where it wants to go, and it has that. And of course, when you're, when you're done, you do. You get that, uh, that feeling of euphoria. But um, it is. It's, it can be very pro-inflammatory, especially if you're, you are already very stressed and that's not necessarily a physical stress but a psychological stress yeah yeah exactly so you know in that case i guess the big question is well what you know what are the sort of things that we can start to do uh to reduce the inflammation and um one of the biggest things that i found um in all the food diaries that you know i've looked through um of people that are complaining about the symptoms of inflammation. Um, One of the key things that we need to do to support the hormonal system to actually um, manage stress and manage the inflammatory response is to make sure we're actually getting adequate amounts of um, protein and fat, vitamin A, D. I mean, D is a hormone, um, but often referred to as, you know, vitamin D. We need to make sure that first and foremostly we're getting adequate amounts of good quality protein and fat um, because that helps our endocrine system, our hormonal system to um, harmonize, if you like, or find balance and buffer, A, buffer the effects of, of cortisol, but also helps us to make sure that we can um, – produce enough cortisol for both the stress responses that the body is having to deal with and not at the expense of the suppression of the immune system, the reproductive hormones, the growth hormones, the repair mm-hmm. hormones, which mm-hmm. does happen when somebody isn't adequately supplementing through their diet with good quality fats and protein they tend to find that they have more of an inflammatory response because their hormonal system is suppressed. Um, the, the part of the hormonal system or the, the parasympathetic system that is responsible for repair, digestion, um, growth, healing, all of that, um, um, all of that kind of rest and digest or repair process of the body is suppressed when we don't have adequate nutrition on board to be able to take care of both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah. the the long story or the short story to that is simply make sure that you've got adequate amounts of good quality, grass fed, grass finished, protein and fat, mm-hmm. 
supplement if needed through fermented cod liver oil and, 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 a, and maybe even a blend of fermented cod liver oil and butter. Mm -hmm. um, that's another great way of supporting the body. Um, so that, that's number one that's key. And at the same time as you're doing that, I mean, just by default, if you do that, you will find that by making healthier choices across your fats and protein, that should naturally start to help you eliminate a lot of the perhaps processed carbs or grains um, mm -hmm. or packaged foods that are highly inflammatory. Mm. Okay? And they're the ones that we've got to cut down on. We've got to cut down on the added sugars. We've got to cut down on, um, you know the processed packaged foods, the breads, the pastas, the rices, um, all of these, um, gluten especially, I mean that goes mm -hmm. without saying but I'll reiterate, um, <laughs> gluten and dairy, yeah. Uh, yeah. when you have inflammation, um, are, you know, two foods yeah. that will feed the fire. Yeah. And if you're wanting to reduce inflammatory responses in the body, then reducing or eliminating, not even reducing, but I am a big one for creating a rainbow bridge, okay? Mm -hmm. we, we don't get there overnight. Um, mm -hmm. And so reducing until you're ready to eliminate um, grains, dairies, um, processed foods. Um, uh, what was the other one I thought of then um, that's, you know, equally important? Um, It'll come back to me. That's all right. It will come back to me. Yeah. Well, and clearly water again, right? I mean, we talked about that earlier, but good gosh. Uh, yeah, you know, of getting... course. And therefore, and therefore, what's the other side of water? Alcohol. <laughs> yeah. Again, making right. sure that, you know, we're mm. significantly reducing alcohol. That's just pure mm -hmm. sugar. Yeah. That's just pure fire, you know, fuel for the fire yet again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, reducing reducing that is really, really important. Yeah. That's what um, Paul uh, refers to it right as the four white devils, yeah? Yeah, the four white devils, you know. Yeah. Um and reducing all of those four white de devils, eliminating them where, where possible and replacing them with um all the foods that we know um create hormonal balance, create yeah. um good alkalizing effects within the body. Mm -hmm. Um more leafy greens more fruits that, you know, are um, less of the simple sugars, more of the more complex um, carbohydrates, less of the starchy carbohydrates, more um, salads, leafy greens and vegetables, above ground vegetables. Yeah. Um, they're all going to help us reduce inflammation. Um, getting on top of food intolerances, another big one. Yeah. Um, Lots of people aren't even realizing that they're creating internal inflammation because of foods that they're intolerant to and they don't realize they're intolerant to. Yeah. And, you know, we can be intolerant to healthy foods. Yeah. Uh, you know, we can be intolerant to nuts, yeah. to eggs, to um, tomatoes, to, you know, I'm, you know, working with a client at the moment who... Um, has had an enormous reaction to all sulfur foods, all wow. sulfur, sulfides, and sulfates. Wow. And that's a lot of foods yeah. that she's had to significantly cut down and eliminate. Wow. Um, and that's, you know, that's a, a, for a lot of other reasons that the body has been exposed to high levels of sulfate um, through her journey. Um, of many operations, etc., mm. um, and now we've got to the point where the body cannot process the levels of sulfates coming through. So the body's actually now starting to react through the sulfates that are coming in via food, right. and all of these are healthy foods, yeah. all organic healthy foods. Mm. So it's a really big one. Food intolerances is a really big one to get on top of, yeah. um, and your key indication that you have a food intolerance is if you have. Um, Pain in the abdominal area, bloating in the abdominal area, excess gas, um, diarrhea, constipation, um, rashes on the skin. Uh, there's so many different ways the body can respond to an actual food intolerance. You've just, you know, that's why the first thing that Paul always says to us is that we should be on at least a training rotation diet. Okay, at the very least, we should all be rotating our proteins, 
um, at the very, very least. Mm -hmm. And if you do respond adversely to foods and you've got no idea what it is, but you know that every time you eat, you know, something that, that you're breaking out in, in something on your skin or, or you're having an adverse effect internally, then get yourself um, on, a, on a rotation diet. And if it has to be a clinical rotation diet where you're actually rotating uh, the family of foods, so, and you probably at that point might need to source some help in doing that because yeah. that's, that does require a more comprehensive approach to actually rotate what they call the taxonomy within yeah. foods and the food groups. Um, but that is, you know, that is something that I, I highly recommend. Yeah. And so the training rotation diet, if somebody wanted to, to try that, right, is rotating your protein so that you only eat the same protein every four days? Correct. Correct. So if I, a training diary is, you know, if I had chicken on Monday, um, then I could eat chicken for the whole day on Monday, but then I wouldn't have it until um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, until Friday. Friday. Okay. Good. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and just a little tip on training diaries that if people are looking uh, to give a training diary a go, it's much easier to start a meal in the evening mm -hmm. just in terms of how much time and effort it takes to start, you know, um, create a, 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 new, uh, a new dish all the time. So if you, mm -hmm. if you said, okay, I'm going to have chicken on, on Sunday night. Mm -hmm. And you, ha you can then have chicken for the whole 24 hours, which means that, you know, you could incorporate chicken into your lunch and breakfast mm -hmm. the next day or breakfast and lunch of right. the next day yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then start a new protein on Monday night and yeah. do the same thing. Mm. Okay. That, that's kind of easier. It tends to fit into the rhythm and the routine and the schedule of people a lot mm -hmm. easier than starting um, at breakfast mm -hmm. and, you know, trying to work out something new the following day mm -hmm. yep okay yeah that's great that, so that that's really helpful and it gives gives a good place to start you know especially the ro rotation diet is a good way to track down things that are causing your you know you to experience inflammation so uh, that's a great that's a great tool right there and you know i mean we we could get into the whole subject around you know supplements to help reduce inflammation, but I really I like to give you know I like to steer people in in the direction of of really their own home pharmacy and yeah. how they can start using you know natural aids such as turmeric and start juicing with large you know quantities of fresh organic turmeric, mm -hmm. um, you know because when you're looking at at, at self medicating in a sense you know, looking after yourself and what are the things that you can start doing before you start, um, you know, reaching outside and, and, and looking at, you know, various supplements and, and that sort of thing. Just what, what can you do naturally mm -hmm. within Mother Nature's pharmacy of what you can buy organically across herbs and, and spices that are going to actually help to tame the fire? And, you know, one of the most well-researched um, of those items is turmeric. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, let's start looking at turmeric. Let's start looking at, you know, essential oils such as peppermint that can be added to some hot water to help tame the fire of the digestive system. Mm -hmm. You know, just things like that. You could even make just a, a, a natural peppermint tea with, with fresh peppermint leaves. Yeah. So just what are the natural things? You know, how can you use ginger? Mm -hmm. um, a mixture of ginger uh, and turmeric mm -hmm. in, you know, in a, in a brew, in a mm -hmm. tea mm -hmm. to actually, again, just calm the internal fire uh, within before you started reaching further outside for prescription anti-inflammatories and all these sort of things. Yeah, yeah. Wow, so that's a lot of things that we can do, right? I mean, it's as simple as water, right? Making sure that you get good, high-quality fats and proteins in your diet. Avoiding those, what we call the four white devils, uh, right? And, and, and that may not be an expression folks are familiar with, but that means processed dairy processed wheat, white flour, uh, but we can include in there, right, any of the grains, uh, glutinous grains, right? Um, processed sh uh, table salt and processed sugar. So those for mm -hmm. added sugar, right? Those, those uh, try to avoid 
those sorts of things. Um, and, uh, well, lots of other things, right? Some work-in exercises can be of, of good help here, too. Yep, yep. Yeah. I will add, I'll add one little thing there, James, about yeah. the um, four white devils mm -hmm. and cutting out processed, you know, white flour. Yep. You mentioned, you know, non-gluten um, products. Mm -hmm. I'd even caution non-gluten products mm -hmm. as well. Right. Um, and, you know, so much new research is coming out, and I've heard this from Paul himself, yeah. that anyone who has had a negative response from gluten, mm -hmm. i.e. a non-celiac gluten sensitivity, mm -hmm. invariably, unless they are, as he will say, BSing themselves, yeah. invariably, they will have a unfavorable response to non-gluten-based grains as well. Yeah. Um, and I can say that with my hand on my <laughs> phone. I was one of them, and I BS myself for as long as I could uh, until I realized that rice, quinoa, um, yeah. and all, you know, buckwheat and all the other uh, non-gluten-based alternatives, I still had an unfavorable response to. Wow. And they still irritated my gut, and therefore any irritation is going to attract inflammation. Yeah, yeah. And last, of course, the, the the training rotation diet. I mean, that's a great place to start, a very simple place to start. Eat the same protein all day and just don't eat it for another four days. Yeah, and that's, that's a really that's great way to track down what's causing the problems. It, it really is. Um, and then once you've kind of got into the rhythm of, of rotating your proteins, then start mm -hmm. to look at rotating your vegetables mm -hmm. and your salads and your fruit and basically your plant, mm -hmm. your plant based products. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, so that's time. That's great. Well, and, and then I have one more exciting thing to announce here as if that all that information was enough. Um, I understand, Joe, that you're going to give our viewers here um, a copy of your ebook, uh, Holy, The Holy Kale of Superfoods. Um, and this is really great. I mean, so if you ever try to eat kale just raw, right, it's, it's not a pleasant experience just to eat it raw, as most of those sort of leafy greens are. And so I imagine that uh, this has all sorts of really creative and, and uh, tasty and, and healthy ways to, to eat kale. It is, and you know, you have to be, again, there are uh, categories of people that would benefit from staying away from eating raw kale. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you have a thyroid issue, then yeah. staying away from raw kale and Brussels yeah. sprouts and spinach and Asian greens and things like that yeah. um, is, is a good idea. Mm -hmm. uh, for goitogens, and they suppress the uptake of iodine for the thyroid to function um, effectively. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I wanted to, to remind people, it sounds obvious, but how often do we forget this? You know, when we're dealing with inflammation, it means the body is drastically trying to compensate. And, and, and in, uh, in doing so, it's needing to go through a healing process. And we mm. forget that the most powerful form of healing is sleep. Mm. And that, you know, as Paul says, sleep is the chief anabolic force of nature. Yeah. And most people, in my experience, that are suffering from inflammation have very poor sleep patterns, don't either um, get a, don't get restorative sleep, um, mm -hmm. they have poor sleeping schedules, they don't get enough sleep when they need it, um, in the hours that we need it for the hormones to mm -hmm. do their job of cleaning out the waste from the, you know, mm -hmm. From the body, melatonin is one of the bodies. It is, in my opinion, the strongest antioxidant there is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it's more powerful than um, um, vitamin C. Um, more powerful than than vitamin E, mm -hmm. and it is one of the body's most natural forms of clearing waste product out but it only happens at night when you're asleep. Yeah. And so if we're not getting adequate sleep and quality sleep, then we're never going to you know, quell the inflammation. Yeah. yeah, that's a great tip. And again, it's, it's a very simple tip. <laughs> we forget, you know, yes. simple. Yes, simple. yes. It's, you know, it's the simple things that, that really have the most powerful effect. 
Yeah. Well, excellent. And so everybody, you can get the a copy of Joe's ebook, the Holy Kale, uh, Holy Kale of Superfoods, um, right below on the blog. There's a little form. You just fill it out, and uh, we'll send you a copy. And I know that you will find it uh, a really useful guide. Um, and thanks, Joe. That was, as always, uh, I just learned so much. You're welcome. Not a problem. Thoroughly enjoy. Always talking to you, James. Uh, likewise. Well, we'll be back, be back again uh, next month. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, I invite you to come to the blog because you won't be able to, to grab Joe's um, ebook uh, on YouTube. You'll have to come to the blog. Uh, but if you're watching on, on YouTube, I invite you to click. I think I'm pointing in the right direction. Click on the subscribe button because Joe and I do this every month and uh, we'd love to have you come stop by and, and we always try to provide you with some really excellent information, hit some really key topics and I think, Joe, you did it again. <laughs> awesome. Good. Right. Thanks, Joe. We'll see you next yeah. month, everybody. See you, Joe. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye.